Sarag, Eva Sarag, um, in Toronto for your world premiere of 90 Minutes. Mm -hmm. um, reference of the title is, is very specific to the to an idea that you had. Um, maybe if you could just break that down, why the why the last 90 minutes of a person's life? Why did that interest you? I think it's interesting because it's when the world still is normal mm -hmm. uh, before the inevitable happens. Mm -hmm. I think uh, these it's it's in intriguing minutes to be because you don't know. Uh, look at you know what do they do? Do they take the bus? They do you know? Do they have a big argument or what? What is uh, yeah? To drink coffee. Mm -hmm. in Norway is the, is the one of the country where there is gender equality. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, then I read that Norway is on top of Europe, together with Spain, when it comes to spousal uh, killings. Okay. So I thought that was a very interesting paradox. So I mean, we don't have many killings in Norway, but if you do get killed, the chances are most likely that you get t killed by someone close to you. Okay. Uh, at home. Okay. So, uh, so the the kernel of the idea came from mm -hmm. from that statistic. Yeah. I had read. I haven't seen your for your debut film, uh, Cold Cold Lunch, mm -hmm. um, but the structure is, from what I heard, somewhat the same in terms of three portraits. Yeah. Well, in Cold Lunch there were even more. Okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is more a bit more strict in its form. It's just three. Uh, and we don't bounce that much back and forth. So. No, it's very actually it's linear. Mm. It's very linear. Yeah. Um, in its portraits, I was thinking when I was watching the film, I thought it was, you made a very deliberate choice as to which of the three stories we would see first, and which yeah. of the three. I mean, the third one. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's that. That's what gravitate. We, we're always lingering back to every story. We're 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 not completely done with one, but mm -hmm. we go back to the other. So I was wondering if that was a very specific choice on your part to have the elder. I, yeah, I wanted to have because the the elder is my romantic story mm -hmm. within this, mm -hmm. and I wanted to have a cinematic feel. And uh, he's living in a lush apartment, so you get better, you know, production value. You're gonna have all this hopefully then beautiful imagery, okay. and that sets you into okay, this is a fiction film. And then you get into a space where it's more nervous, yeah, but you don't know quite what's going on. And then you get into more hellish uh, mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. And we normally have a point of no return for the character. Yeah. Uh, I like to think of it, it's no return for the audience. From here on out, it's... Yeah, in terms of atmospherics, the, yeah. the framing of, especially the third story, if I, I can call it mm -hmm. that, is very, very specific. How we're introduced to the characters mm -hmm. is a very specific idea. Um, how did you come about framing it in such a specific way? Uh, I love Haneke, though. Okay. So, yeah, and uh, I... Have you seen more? Uh, no, I haven't had time I can't, yet. I can't wait till you see Amor. Oh. Because uh, it's a reference, well, not references, uh, but there's similarities to your first narrative okay. in, the, in, in this one. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's, um, mm, yeah, so, but I wanted, to, because, you know, we tell stories with pictures. So mm -hmm. I think every frame that you do is important, and you have to have a, a reason for why you're putting your camera just there, not just representing your story, but actually use the medium for what it's worth. Yes. And uh, I think that when you, I wanted to do, because if you are in the other room, you know, I have the camera a lot in, in the other room and mm -hmm. shooting through doorways mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, or outside and in, gives you that more of a um, observant uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. And also when you stay in the shot a long time, you get more of them, this is, you, you don't get away. No, it's a claustrophobic uh, yeah. feeling throughout. Yeah. And I wanted to do that in juxtaposition with the more close up. So mm -hmm. where we're intimate with yeah. the characters. And then we're out again. We're more observant. And it gives you, yeah. Um, can you discuss the choice? Um, you do. You have like an insert shot of, it's a, it's a crowd, mm -hmm. blurred populace. Mm -hmm. I was wondering what... What was your ideas with, with that specific shot, which comes back, I think there's three, four mm. instances of that. Yeah, I wanted to just give the audience some time to breathe, okay. sort of just land <laughs> a couple of times, okay. so that we don't just it's push not... and push and push, yeah. So, okay. uh, and also to have this feeling of uh, uh, that it's, it's, you know, it's people without faces, but you know, but it's, uh, it can happen to any one of us. It, it could be someone living next to you. Uh, and... It's men at wit's end. That means mm -hmm. they get to a point 
a breaking point and they don't know how to reach out and get help is that mm. is it, would, would you say that's something are the norwegian men that you know proud fishermen or they, yeah, no, they, I, the thing is that i don't know okay you know so i just try to i just try to to, to think of what it would feel like mm -hmm. to be in that situation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Okay. So it's more of like I'm, I'm posing the question. Yeah. And and hopefully there will be a debate about the male role in you know. Norway. Filming of this, there was the uh, a very horrendous act in in your nation. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, did this occur when you were filming? Or did this occur in pre-production stages? When did? In pre-production. Okay. And how did that? How did that potentially? Did that in any way uh, shape or influence how the perhaps narrative yeah. nuggets or stuff like that? Well, honestly, I was going to be a bit more graphic okay. in the film, but mm -hmm. I pulled that you, back. You pushed back, yeah. you know, pulled back a little mm, bit. It wasn't necessary. Okay. Actually, I'll go to the actors, specifically in the third part. Mm. Um, how difficult is it to cast those two roles, um, especially that the male actor is mm. he's fa fairly familiar, he's, he's a, he's a yeah. well-known actor, was... Was he a bit hesitant to, to accept such a role? Because it does come off mm. like, you know, like it's it's a very horrendous character. Mm. Well, he, he, most of this cast I took uh, were in Cold Lunch as well. Okay. My, my first film. Okay. So uh, and uh, Axel, I think he he wasn't that hesitant. I I think he thought about it a little bit, but I, he liked the the challenge. Mm -hmm. So I wrote it for him as well. You know, I wanted him to try to go. And he was in Cold further. Lunch. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so there was a comfort level already there yeah. between you and him. Yeah. Then you give him the the script. Yeah. He reads the script. What's what's his initial reaction? Well, he knew that it was going to be hard. Okay. So uh, no, he loved it. Oh, great. He thought it was uh, really really well. Okay. A, a good script. So um, it wasn't a problem to get him, but we we did search a lot for the right uh, uh, actress uh -huh. uh, to play with him. Okay. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, we landed on Kaya, and I think she's doing a fabulous job. Yeah, it's very, it's, yeah. it's, it's... But she thought a bit more about it when she got offered the part. Okay. Uh, but also because there was a more nudity in the uh -huh. screenplay. And, okay. Mm. But also, good. yeah, but she did it, yeah. Very physical role and emotionally wrought role. At TIFF this year, there's four Norwegian titles. Mm. And I've been noticing for the last couple of years that there's some genre items. There's the Troll Hunters. Mm. There was Happy Happy, which uses mm. one of your actor, the, mm. the guy that like, looks like Liam Neeson a bit. Yeah, uh, Harald Rolf. Right? Yes. So, yeah. so, I'm always looking for trends in cinema. I, mm. I wouldn't s specifically say that there's there's a movement here, mm. but there's a lot of there's a lot of attention now mm. in Norwegian, the Nor in the national cinema. Mm. Is it because there's better promotion? Is it is it would it I like, think it's a combination of several things okay. that uh, that you, we had the the girl with the dragon tattoo started mm -hmm. you know people started to look more seriously to Scandinavia and then they sort of rolled out uh, several good films mm -hmm. out of Scandinavia mm -hmm. and then we had the Headhunters mm -hmm. that was the uh, Axel yeah uh, it was also a tiff uh, yeah, yeah that was also a tiff um, that I think sort of paved the way in a way and then of course we have become much better at making movies in Norway. Is there, they, they, is there a support system there? Yeah, is there like there, a national they, program? Is there yeah, like, okay. and, they, and there's been a lot of good political will. So they have uh, supported them and, and, yeah. Great stuff. Yes. Thank you very much, Eva. Thank Please you. appreciate your time. Yes. Thank you. No problem.